Welcome to the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. I'm your host and speaking coach, Deborah Darris, known as the top Latina peak performance speaker. This podcast is here to support you with strategies and best practices of paid speakers so you can find out what works and what doesn't so you can achieve success with ease and grace in your speaking career. Enjoy the show. Are you always on the road speaking and your house is all alone collecting dust? Wouldn't it be nice to make some passive income while you're out speaking on the road? Well, I do. Want to know my secret? Airbnb. I use Airbnb to make some extra cash to reinvest in marketing for my speaking business. It's so simple. You just set up a listing and voila, you come home to money in your bank account on top of what you already made speaking. If you want to know more, go to the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast.com to get all the information. Welcome back to another episode of the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. It is such a great day today because we have not only my neighbor, my friend, but international speaker and public relations guru. So I'm so excited to share with her you, to share her with you today. And before I do, I want to share something with you. I don't know if you know, but I have a five steps to be a paid speaker now free webinar right for you to download. You can get it at debradaris.com slash speak now. So let me introduce you to Katie Long. She is the owner and founder of DIY PR Group based in Los Angeles and creator of the DIY PR Bootcamp. As a publicist for over a decade, Katie speaks to small business owners, entrepreneurs, creatives, and independent musicians about how to create a professional public relations campaign without paying for an expensive PR team. We all need that. Therefore, increasing your exposure, customer base, and profits. Katie speaks internationally for large organizations such as CD Baby and the Berkeley College of Music, both in English y en español también. Please help me welcome Katie Long. You like that? <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> I'm making you quite laugh. the introduction. Yes. yes. Yes, because you are quite the woman, mm. and I Likewise. know. I- I haven't seen you in a while, but like mm-hmm. I have this little Katie voice in my head. You're just so inspirational Aww. and you're so full of fantastic and wonderful energy. And I'm just so happy to be able to bring you and your amazing work to our audience. So let's start about public relations. How okay. did you get into that field? Well, um, let's see. I, originally, um, I wanted to be an actress. My entire family were actors and everything, and I went to college for uh, vocal performance uh, and uh, musical theater. And at one point in that journey, I think I called my mom and I said, you know what, I think I want a degree that will provide me with a stable income. I think it was the best day of my mom's life, right? <laughs> um, but that led me to public relations, And but I had also always had uh, and found an excitement um, and I was drawn to the entertainment industry. So that led me to Los Angeles, uh, where I got my first job in, as a music publicist. Um, and I've been in film and television. I work uh, with design clients. I work with who else? Uh, wellness clients. I love wellness. Um, and that I was working with firms and everything. And then I decided, you know, I also have this entrepreneurial spirit in me mm-hmm. that I get from my dad and my mom. Um, so... I decided to start my own business and I was like, what is this need that uh, I can fill with my skills in PR? And I actually was listening to, uh, are you familiar with Lewis Howes? Oh, I watch uh, his podcast. Are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, I love so him. I was watching a free webinar from Lewis Howes he's driving great. one day. Um, yeah, I love him. Um, he's got a nice mix of uh, motivational business and aspects, spiritual. But also spirituality. Exactly. Yes. So uh, he was actually offering on this webinar um, how to create your own webinar. And there was just this light bulb that went off for me. 
of, oh my gosh, I could teach people how to do PR because everyone needs PR. Your business right. isn't going anywhere with PR. You're, uh, you know, if you're a musician, you're not going anywhere without PR if no one hears your music. So um, I developed the initially the DIY musician, uh, DIY music PR boot camp, uh, which taught independent musicians how to uh, complete a PR campaign for their new music release. And the way I facilitated that was by doing webinars, so weekly webinars. And so I was growing this brand uh, called DIY Music PR and um, working with these incredible independent artists who just uh, really blew my mind, I guess. And it was, um, they were so, they were like sponges. They needed this information. You don't know what you don't know, right? So they, uh, and this was such a lack for them. You know, there's like kind of smoke and mirrors over PR. Right. You know, what is it? What, what can it do for me? Why is it so expensive? And artists can't, uh, and creatives in general, can't usually afford uh, a PR campaign. And then that falls in with entrepreneurs and unless they have funding and, you know, are backed by, by uh, organizations or people, um, you know, it's challenging to be able to pay $5,000 a month or more for a PR team. So... How could I fill that need? Because it's not rocket science. Right. You know, PR is um, it's just simple tricks and strategies that you can learn to be able to get your um, your brand out there and, you know, that with marketing. In and when general. you say when you get your brand out there, because mm -hmm. I remember I was interviewing a PR person and she said that she would you know, have a retainer and it was a thousand dollars a month. And when I first started, I thought that was a lot. And she's like, she used to be the personal booker for Larry King. Okay. So she had like all these connections. Wow, a thousand bucks a month. Right. That's cheap. I, I should have done it. <laughs> and, but she, but, but, but the reason why I didn't do it, cause she said, I, but I can't promise you anything. Uh -huh. I could pitch you to things. Yeah. But, and so talk, talk to us about what is PR and what it isn't because I think sure. there's a lot of illusions sure. and I know that the speakers that I see that are out there being booked are on television they are having that visibility so it's super important for speakers to use PR absolutely and that is one of the number one questions that I get from clients and potential clients is that I um, can you guarantee me results right and I say you know what if anyone tells you that they can guarantee you something run away exactly because that's not what PR is PR is finding your unique story and pitching that to whether that um, publicist has personal contacts that can get you into, uh, you know, the New York Times or the LA Times, or if they're trailblazing those contacts for you. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to tell your story in an entertaining and impactful way and get covered by the top newspapers, um, online blogs, um, uh, radio shows, podcasts now, um, everything. You know, whatever it is, a form of media that gets your uh, name out there because PR is much less invasive than advertising. Right. Uh, what is it? 80% of business leaders would prefer to make, uh, or 80% of clients or potential customers make decisions from articles as opposed to advertising. It's true. And then uh, I think it was 85% of business uh, decision makers actually make decisions from third-party articles that they're reading about people. So if you can get your, your brand placed, like say you're an influencer, which you are, um, and you decide to do a PR campaign and you go after uh, publications that are in your target market, uh, then that makes you more discoverable for your industry and for people to find you uh, as a speaker in general. Uh, but it also helps build your brand and then gives you content for social media and it makes you more Googleable, you know. So there's just so many different ways that parlays you into success for your career. Career. And and that is so important because as speakers, we could be the best speaker ever. We could have the most amazing content. But if we are not discoverable, if people can't find us on Google, and you're so right about the articles, because people believe articles. They don't if you did an ad, like the, when you Google Latina speaker, there's a guy named Harry Walker that has an ad. I'm like, I really believe that you're probably yeah, not Latina. He's, he's uh, vouching for himself. So if someone else is vouching for you, that makes such much more of an impact. 
Yes. So so speakers out there could really benefit from someone like you because what you're doing is you're creating that story. You're creating that angle that they might be too close to not see how that would be newsworthy. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Because a lot of times something I run into a lot with people is um, – you know, they're telling little details that actually aren't newsworthy, what we call it. So things that would be interesting to the media. Um, so for instance, uh, you know, saying that you moved to Los Angeles because you got a job in 2006 might be impactful to you and your personal story, but it's not to the LA Times. Who cares, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, and it, that's not discounting it or anything. Right. Um, but that's my job to be able to pick and choose what actually will make a splash with with people and right. impact, yeah. I love it. So not only do you help entrepreneurs that with their PR, but you also are an international speaker. So let's talk. About, I mean, I'm not joking. When I met her, we met at Instagram workshop class. And we were like eyeing each other across the room like, you're cool. You're cool. We have to tell our story of how we met. Too. Yeah, you tell it. Well, mm, I'm not that great at, <laughs> at it. But there's just so many different synchronicities that brought us together. We met at this uh, Instagram workshop at our co-work now our co-working space. I moved into the her same office. Same co-working space. And then uh, we go to the same gym. We decide to go grab wine and uh, said, oh, I'll meet you at your place. <laughs> we turn down the same alley. We share the same we alley. We live on the same block. <laughs> and then we're both Scorpios. Our significant others are both Cancers. Like just crazy random, random things. But then I, we also share very similar beliefs about how to live our lives and the law of attraction and everything. So um, yeah, I was just very drawn to you. And now I'm taking your mastermind. I know. So I'm so, so excited. excited. Katie's going to be part of the Synergy Speaker Mastermind mm -hmm. and her being a bilingual Spanish speaking speaker, going to blow the roof off, especially it's, it is so fun. Everyone is so excited and mm -hmm. excited that you're part of it. So I want to talk about, you know, when we met at the Instagram class and she's like, oh yeah, um, I'm not going to be in town because I'm going to be, I don't know where you were, Ecuador. Well, I was speaking in Spain. Ecuador was for fun. Oh, yeah. I know Spain, Ecuador. <laughs> I so love to travel. Let's talk about how you became bilingual Spanish speaking and then how you get booked to speak internationally. Okay. So I've been speaking Spanish for um, probably about 12 years now. I started in uh, school and college and then uh, I studied in Costa Rica, and then I studied in Spain, in Valencia is where it's called. And um, beyond that, I've been working with Spanish speakers for the past uh, 10 years or That's so. probably so just the most Spanish exactly, you learned. Exactly, 100%, just being um, in uh, diving in and just, you know, there were times where I was just not comfortable speaking and I had to, you know, so just really um, going outside of my comfort zone. Um, and I just love Spanish. It, it's such a beautiful yeah. language. Yeah. I'm like... Yes, I love it. So anyways, um, I that was always in the background here. And then um, I work with uh, occasionally and I partner with and they're uh, very well known in the music industry as CD Baby. They're the largest yeah, uh, independent music label. Um, and I'm friends with the crew there. And they uh, were doing a version of their conference called the DIY Musician Conference. My program is called the DIY Music PR boot camp. So DIY. Um, and so the DIY musician conference was in Valencia, Spain, which is where I studied in college. Wow. And I hadn't been there for, you know, the decade. So like going between. home. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I talked to the guys said, you know, I can do a Spanish presentation, would love to do an English presentation as well. And they booked me. Um, and it was an incredible experience. Uh, I just from that moment on knew that you know, I'm not an actress like the rest of my family, but there was a stage yes. presence there that I just needed to pursue. So the English presentation was phenomenal. And then the Spanish presentation as well. I had so much fun. And it was one of those things stepping outside of your comfort zone right. and really just owning it. And it was so rewarding. How right. It happened. So um, they booked me again. I'm speaking at their uh, U.S. <gasps> yeah. And uh, their U.S. Um, version that's in Austin in August. I'll do, I'll be doing English and Spanish. Again. Yeah. Oh so. my God. That's so fantastic. Yeah, it'll be fun. It was, it's just so, um, rewarding to me to be able to help people with information that I've kind of grown up around. Um, and I just know it like the back of my hand, but it's not 
uh, common sense. You know, PR is not common sense. Right. And so the when I was speaking in Spain, the reaction I got from the kids, and actually a lot of them aren't kids, um, was so PR is not a, an emotional subject, but I got an emotional response from these people. And it was such a, a beautiful thing and so rewarding. I was just so ex excited about it to be able to, to like you say, we're the... Um, the messenger for the message, yes. you know, and so they're not uh, in love with me. They're in love with the message and the inspiration that I can somehow provide to them. Um, and that was just really, really a fun experience. And that's just such a testimony to the passion that you bring because you're so passionate and really wanting to, for them to get it and make a difference in their life. Mm -hmm. It evokes that emotion. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't remember it was Zig Ziglar or Les Brown that says, people don't remember what you say, but they remember how you make them feel. Exactly. And those, and those are the speakers that mm -hmm. get booked again. And the reason why you're so marketable as a speaker and why everyone listening needs to also pay attention to what she's saying is niching your niche. So her niche is public relations, but within that niche, it's people in the music industry and with an emphasis on Spanish speaking. So that's the niche of the niche of the niche where there is no competition. You own that lane, right? I mean, really, when you think about who's speaking on that, yeah, I nobody. Haven't, I haven't found anyone that um, does the same thing. And even if they did, <laughs> they wouldn't do it the way that right, you do it and like, in your messenger way. And there's room for everyone. You know, I'm a firm believer. There's there's enough uh, abundance for everyone. Um but yeah, and beyond that with entrepreneurs and the um, and small businesses and such too, and products, people launching products. Uh, I think it's what you bring to the table as an individual that makes you stand out and what makes you marketable. Exactly. And so when it came to the booking, how did you know how to do your contracts and how did you get the repeat business? Of course, you knocked the ball out of the park for the repeat business. I mean, but the re yeah, the repeat business is just Im impressing the, the, dis the business decision makers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that uh, I worked for months, like we were talking about earlier, you know, it's, it's an hour, but it's not really an hour. It's not an hour. I was practicing that Spanish presentation just because it was um, outside of what I was 100% comfortable with. Right. Um, I was practicing that an hour every day for maybe three months. That's I don't fantastic. Know, just because, you know, and now I'm prepared for the one in August and, right. and whatever I do in between. Um, but, you know, negotiating, I think when you're deciding your what you're worth, always know what you're worth. Mm -hmm. And that... I think that goes honestly, I'll get kind of metaphysical here, but down to the vibration and what you feel is right. A line for, for success. Exactly. 100% <laughs> because you know you're worth it and you just um, need to find a, a number that feels good to you. Exactly. Um, you know, whether you're speaking for free because it's uh, giving you um, – you know, experience or you have a product that you can push while at that engagement right. or you're getting email addresses or something that's benefiting you. Right. Um, or if you're doing it just to, to get paid for that one hour, you know, um, it can, it can vary in between what you're yeah. Yeah. That F yeah. word free. I like to call it business development. Yeah, it's never yeah. for free. I mean, you're always getting something out of it. In my opinion, you're getting content uh, for your social media. Um, uh, I, at the beginning, you know, speaking pro bono, I guess, mm. is, you know, you can do that. It gets your, your um, name out there. Um, but make sure you're building your business while exactly. you're doing that and using those to get you more discoverable on Google and, um, you know, work on your SEO and all, all of the things that the components that will help you. And I really think speakers are leaving money on the table by not taking advantage of PR. Like yeah. sometimes I'll be like, I speak a lot in South Florida. That's my place. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. Hollywood. They know, know me. 305 <laughs> all day long. I, I've been, to, I've spoken at like every single hotel, Fountain Blue, Eden Rock, Margaritaville. Uh, it's like oh, a rough life, but somebody's got to do it. And I actually <laughs> just optimized my Google. You know how you have your Google business? And they said, what is your area? I said, Los Angeles and Miami. 
So I could really target the areas where I want to be because if I'm going to schlep and get my luggage on the plane, I want to go to somewhere where after I'm done speaking, I want to go to the beach. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? What was it? I think it was Abraham Hicks who they said, uh, Jerry and Esther, they started uh, – their business by saying, where do we want to go? Ah. And then building their their touring schedule from oh, that. I didn't know that. And they had their whole van uh, where they yes. were always on tour. Love I them. saw them. I told you. So amazing. We, like all the same people. I know. It's I know. crazy. So <laughs> how could we as speakers get PR to events that we're already speaking at? Like how would we DIY that or would we hire someone like you to do that? Because if we're speaking at an event we and it's open to the public, we should be getting exposure for that that would book other events. Right, 100%. So you can use those. See, that would be something – newsworthy, we'll call mm -hmm. it, right? Okay. So you can use that as part of your pitch uh, to the media. So regard, depending on what, um, what industry you're in, so say you're a wellness influencer and you uh, are Pop Sugar, for example, has an event uh, that um, has speakers, wellness influencers from all over the world and the country, everywhere. Um, and it's a massive event in New York. And so if you're booked to speak there, then reach out to these other publications uh, in the wellness space, so Refinery29, um, any local New York publications, any of those types of, uh, of media outlets in that scope that would be interested in you as for your expertise and then throw that little tidbit in there that you're going to be speaking um, at the Pop Sugar uh, conference. You know, so just kind of getting, uh, being, finding opportunities to be able to, to, I guess, insert into there that you are a paid speaker and, uh, you have that credibility and then that'll be good for your SEO and someone's, go someone's Googling you, they can find, you know, that article will probably pop up. Um, Yeah. So, and a lot of events I speak at, like they will already have the press. Like I used to speak for many years at this conference called, it's no longer going on, Hispanicize. And it was for PR people, mm -hmm. influencers, and also like social media gurus. And we would all come together and they would say, would you be available for the press? I would say, yes, I'm oh, and everyone listening, I'm always available for yeah. the press. And if uh, they don't always do that, they don't always ask because there might be, you know, hundreds of people at this event. So um, always, if you can get your your hands on a media list of the press that are going to be at that conference, uh -huh. do it. And then reach out to them because they're going to be there anyways. Their job there is to cover people like you. So. And I think in reaching out, because some of the speakers listening, I can, I'm intuitive, so I can hear what their questions are. They're like, but what do we say? And how do we do a pitch uh -huh. that's going to get them heard? Any DIY tips okay. for what the pitch would look like? Definitely. So the pitch needs to be short and sweet. Okay? Mm. These people get hundreds of pitches every week. Um, but and they want pitches, right? They want pitches, but they want pitches that are relevant to their beat. Got it. So find a way to connect with this journalist, okay? Mm. Are you um, from their hometown? Do they did they previously ah. write about something that you've been, an organization you've been involved in? Um, so find that connecting point. Well, that you're Salvadorian? Make them, I was married to a Salvadorian, like anything, right? Some, yeah. I mean, if it's relevant to, <laughs> to speaking, then that's probably better. But, you know, like anything that just um, creates that human connection, um, but also identifies with what they love to write about. Mm -hmm. Writers hate getting anything from anyone that has nothing to do with what they write right. about. So make sure you're doing uh, your research. That is so, so important. And finding, you can build your media list, which you'll actually use for the entirety of your career. So really spend time building a personal media list that, mm -hmm. that, uh, has journalists on it that would be interested in you. And each time something newsworthy happens for you, you can reach out to them. But the, the wow. pitch is um, short and sweet. You know, you want something catchy, that uh, a connecting point, and then how can you help them? Do you have a large social media following? Uh, the, the key, one of the pillars of PR is creating relationships, lasting relationships. So you want to... Um, create relationships with the people that cover you. And what do they want? They want to write about people that are going to help elevate their career. So how can you be that person? 
right? How can you, do you have a large social media following and you can bring lots of eyes to the article that they're publishing? That's kind of an incentive for them, you know? Mm. Or, um, you know, is this um, something about a cause that they really care about? So always make your pitch short and to the point and concise, but include all additional information, links, meaning links, Mm -hmm. um, that they can click on to learn more. So... That's, and like have a, a press release. Like you can template. have a press release. Um, some of the most successful campaigns, and maybe not all publicists will agree with me on this, but some of my most successful campaigns have not included press releases, oh. um, but some of them have. So, you know, it's kind of your own personal preference. If you're not comfortable in the business of self-promotion, which we got to get over that, number right. one, but um, some people create, and i seen success with this create uh, a made-up email address that's like pr at uh at deborahdaris.com or something you know um and that way it could be your team reaching out and it's a little bit easier to self-promote yourself when uh it you're not necessarily talking about how great you are um and if you don't have a problem with that then totally fine and how (laughs) i see it in my mind is my service or my speaking is solving a problem that they have so i don't see it as self-promotion i see it as I'm helping them. But just to summarize, she said some really great things that you need to be writing down because this podcast isn't just for you to listen and be inspired, but to take inspired action. She said you could make a PR list or you should do your research and find the people that are the perfect people to let people know about you. I have Latina Magazine, Hispanic Lifestyle Magazine, and Latina Style, and they've I've written for them or they feature them, but I'm not going back to them. Hello, friends. I'm here. There you <laughs> go. There you go. Go. I'm like, wait a minute. 100%. See? So we're already learning how to be a paid speaker. Now be even more paid, higher paid, repetitively paid, because why not? When I, my affirmation. There's so much money out there. Yeah. Go get it. We are in the <laughs> infinite flow of mm-hmm. abundance. And if you live in a place of circulation rather than a place of scarcity, like you said, mm-hmm. there's enough for everyone. And one of the things that I noticed a lot is in certain industries that there's backstabbing and competitiveness. And so one of the things that I love about you and all the people that I bring to this podcast is we're about synergy, Mm -hmm. that we collaborate and we're better together and we all grow. And knowing this PR, I think we need a DIY for speakers, a DIY PR for speakers. Maybe that's the next course. Girl, girl, I would promote (laughs) the heck out of that. I love it. I love it. Right? Yeah. Ooh la la, that just was a divine download. It came to me. So how can people book you for speaking and stay in connection with you? Um, the easiest way to get a hold of me would be emailing me. So Katie, K-A-Y-T-E-E, at DIYPR Group, DIYPR Group dot com. Um, and uh, on social media, it's at Katie Long uh, are all my handles. Um yeah, I think the website right now is a little more focused on musicians, but if you want to get an idea of the results I've gotten and success stories and all that fun stuff, then you can go to DIYPRgroup.com. But shoot me an email. I'd love to connect with anyone uh, that's listening. And yeah. Maybe. And I love being in the office with her because then she's like, we just got somebody in Billboard magazine. I'm like, ooh, big deal. <laughs> so thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come here. I really appreciate you being here live and in person. Thank you, and I appreciate all of you for listening. And like I said, don't just listen. Take inspired action. This podcast is for you to be able to be that messenger for the message, to really take your speaking to the next level. Why? Because people's lives are transformed by you because people are waiting to hear what you have to say in the unique way that you have to say it. So I'm really grateful and thankful that you've taken this time to listen and please write a review on iTunes if you loved it. Share it on your social media. You know sharing is caring. And I would like to share something with you. I have a five steps to be a paid speaker now webinar right for you to download easy breezy on my website. It's debradaris.com slash speak now and you can receive it right away and i look forward to seeing you on the next episode thanks thank you for tuning in to the be a paid speaker now podcast if you want to get a free webinar on five steps to be able to be a paid speaker go to debradaris.com slash podcast 
Thanks for tuning in. And remember, you are the messenger for the message. And with the power of synergy, anything is possible.